live a life to where they just don't care about their lives. Basically, they live a life thinking that they can live forever before they make a change. Sometimes we get deceived by the devil to say, I got a long life to live before I want to get right with the Lord. Sometimes we get deceived to say, I got time before I want to get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Sometimes it goes through our mind that I'm young and I got plenty of years to live my life. Let me go ahead and tell you something. That life is valuable and if it's not taken for granted, we will lose it before you know it. Bible says that life is just like a bank. One moment that you're here and then the next moment you're gone. It don't take for you to be sick to lose your life. You can be the healthiest person in the world and still die at that very moment. You can be the healthiest person and still have a stroke and a heart attack and die. One thing about death is that God don't discriminate where you at or where you going or where you gonna be at. If he calls your name, he's gonna call it right there and come to him in heaven. I'm reminded that two years ago, was it a year ago when Buffalo had a real bad snowstorm and it had a young lady that was trapped in the car. She was on the phone with her folks telling her that I'm going to stay in my car and I'm about to take a nap. Next thing you know, she died in her car because the snow was so deep that the exhaust came back in the car and she died in her car. Lady, you know, you never know when you're going to die. Yeah, but when you die, you better make sure you in him when you die. And I'm going to talk about who to be in before you die. One thing about it, it reminds me of, there was a rapper that I heard of name of Coolio. If you know him, but if you know him not, but I must explain this, is that one moment it said that he had to go use the restroom. When he used, went to use the restroom, he ain't came back for a while, so they checked on him, and he was dead as a donut in the bathroom. Don't matter where you went, when God calls your name, it's time to go. But before he calls your name, is that we better make sure we in here. One thing about it is that we got to pay attention to alarms in our life. Yeah. Pay attention to it. You may be sick, going through some type of illness that's life-threatening. God's sparing your life still to the moment so you can get right with the Lord. Amen. You might have been in a wreck, survived the wreck, got hurt. You might have been in an incident, got shot, or whatever it may be. That you was in the hospital and God spared your life and you still out here after the food. You out here lost everything in the world and God still spared your life, but you still after the food. You got to pay attention to alarms in life that sometimes sickness don't come from the devil. Sickness can come from God. God can put some on you to humble you, but if you're not going to take heed to humble yourselves and return to him, therefore he might say, therefore I had enough. It's time to come home. Best thing you know is that it's too late because scripture says work while it's day, but when it's nightfall, no man can work. So when you're sick, when you're going through something, you didn't survive something, thank the Lord because he spared your life because he's giving you time to get right with him. Amen. Therefore, everyone in here has been to a funeral or know somebody that has died, right? You didn't see that person laying there or you seen that cremation. Uh, that's sitting there on the table. Why people cannot be touched as in you looking at them not knowing you can be next. You can be next in the life because once you're dead, you're gone. There's no more about it. The only thing you can remember is a voice or a picture or imagination in your mind. Other than that, they are gone. When you look at that, that should touch one of us. That should touch us and let it know that I need to get my life right because I'm witnessing this right here that they are gone and death is real. Amen? Amen. Death comes to everyone. Yeah. You either, it says it's a point for one man to die, then after that, the judgment. And if you won't die in him, it is hell to pay. Amen? Amen. I want to talk about today about being in him. Amen? The scripture says that to whom the fullness of the Godhead dwelleth in, which meaning that the manifestation of God was in Jesus Christ. The whole Godhead was in Jesus. The Father was in Jesus. Philip said, show us the Father. And Jesus said, have I not been with you for so long? The Word was in Jesus. 
The Bible says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. The Holy Spirit was Jesus Christ. In John, the 14th chapter, verse 8 through 14, you can see what Jesus said that there will be a comforter that will be sent that the Word cannot receive, but as of the Father, and He said, I will come unto you. Jesus said, I will come unto you, let you know that the whole Godhead is just inside of him. That's why it's important, people, a child has been born. That's why it was important that a child has been given. Because if it was not given, to hell we all going to go. But God gave us mercy and grace that we receive his son when he has done for us. Amen. Amen. We need to understand to him. Him is a singular word meaning one. Let you know that there is only one way, one truth, and one life, one faith, and one hope. The Bible says that there is one Lord, one faith, one hope, one body, and that is the church. Him is singular, not they, because they is the ones that gets us in trouble. We either listening to him or we listening to they. That's your choice to choose between heads or choose the tail. And I'm going to explain who they is. Him, one God. Scripture says that I am the Lord thy God, thy only one. There is none besides me, or none before me, and there is none like me. There is one Lord in Psalms 100 chapter, verse 3 says, The Lord is thy God, that he maketh everything in the heaven and the earth, and we are the sheep of his pasture. It didn't say pastures, it said pastor. They know that there's only one pastor that we need to belong to, and that is of the sheep of the good shepherd, and that is Jesus Christ. Amen. There's only one hope in him. The Bible don't say there's no hopes. There's only one hope, and that is through the hope of our calling, which is of Jesus Christ. Now, they, they teach you different doctrines when there's only one true doctrine. Jesus says, go out into the world and preach the gospel. That means there's only one. But they are teaching gospels out here in the world. They are teaching doctrines out here in the world when there's only one true doctrine. They are here teaching all type of faith how to get to the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. Jesus said, I am the door. He didn't say I'm the doors. There are many doors. There's only one door, and that is Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, I mean, any other way, you are treated just as a thief and a robber. Jesus is the only way, and that is unto him. Amen? Amen. I want to I wanna get an understanding about unto him. When we leave out here today, it's going to be in our mind. Unto him, unto him, unto him. Verse 6, 7, 9, and 10. If you look at it very carefully, it got in him, in it. The word in him, in him, in him. In him, there's power. In him, there's strength. In him, there's amazing. In him, there is the shepherd. In him is the bread. In him, there's the light. In him, there's the water. In him, there is victory. In him, there's salvation. In him, there's testimony. In him, there's everything you possibly need that's in him. Amen? I can go and close it out, can I? You got to understand what I'm talking about in him, right? In him is everything. The bread, the life, the water. In him is the blood that sacrificed for us to save all of our souls. In him is one we need to give the praise and honor to. Honor Christ, amen? Yeah. It's unto him. But I got to break it down for us, amen, about unto him. Let's learn about unto him. In him there is life and life. Jesus, the Bible says that in him was life, and the life was the light of me. Jesus gives life for those that needs life. And last time I checked, everyone in here needs life. You live in a physical life, but you need a spiritual life. Jesus gives eternal life. Jesus gives spiritual life. He gives light into the darkness. Scripture says that he brought us out from the darkness into the light. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. But the only way to be the light of the world is to be a part of that light. He didn't say be a part of the light. You be a part of that one light, and that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Bible says in 1 John, the fifth chapter, but those who have the Son have life. But those that have not the Son have not life. That's pretty, pretty, pretty much self-explanatory. But I can break it more down to it to help us out. Basically, what that means is that if you don't die in Jesus Christ, you're going to go to hell. If you die with Jesus Christ in your life, you're going to make it to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. You only got two choices what you want to do. You either die in him or you die without him. Why do you think Paul said that I've been crucified with Christ? It is I now that I live, but Christ liveth in me. That I the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. You got to let your life go and live it up to Christ.
Christ now. You got to live in Christ. You got to be in him. Amen. Live in Christ and be in Christ. In him, you are justified, meaning that you are approved. That means that you. everybody likes to be approved of something. When you get a new car, a new house, or you're trying to get something, you get approved. But one thing we don't like is being denied. When you be denied, it's like a letdown. It makes you sad. It just makes you say, well, I can't get it because I ain't got good credit. One thing about it, when you was born in sin, you was born with bad credit. And one thing about it, Jesus Christ, when he shed his blood on the cross, he gave you good credit. And all the way that you can get good credit with God is through Jesus Christ. There ain't no other credit out here in the world that can get you right with God only through Jesus Christ. But they... They would teach you that there's many ways that you can get right with God. But the only way that you can get right with God is that you have to live in him. Amen? In him, you're dead to sin and that you're alive to Christ. You know you can be alive right now, but you're dead as a donut, right? You know you can be breathing, looking good, smelling good, talking good, but your spiritualness is dead as a donut. The Bible said that his, Jesus is the one that quickened our spirits that we have to accept him and bring him into our lives, that he is the life and the resurrection, that he brings us up to life, that we may live spiritually. The Bible says, for those that live by the flesh, you should surely die, but those that live by the spirit shall live. So mortify the deeds of the flesh. So things of the flesh and things of our whole self that we have to bury and that we have to be dead to. Amen? When you was born, you was dead in sin. You was, you was dead in sin. I was saying the wages of sin is death. So the way to escape that is through the scapegoat and that you have to go unto him. Don't listen to they. You go unto him. But the best for your salvation is in him. Amen? Everybody all right? In him, there's no condemnation, meaning that you're found guilty. That means when you walk in the courtroom and you ain't got no lawyer presenting you, that all things against you, and you're going to be found guilty. But when you walk in the courtroom and you got a lawyer with you and tell you, that's okay, you can go ahead, I got you. That's who one we need to go to because they will sit here and tell you, you can fight for yourself. But what he is trying to tell you is that you need to be unto him, that he can have no condemnation in you whatsoever. Amen? In Jesus, you are free. The Bible says that for free, the son says free, is free indeed. Who else in the Bible, who else in the world do you know who can set you free? What other religion teaches that they can set you free? There's only one, and that is through him. That's why until us a child is born and until us a son is given to be that sacrificial lamb that we may have peace back with God. Amen? In him, you are no longer under law. You're under grace. The Bible says the law comes through Moses, but grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. You either want to live by the law or you want to live by grace. You want to live by the law, you got to still watch what you eat. You got to be under the dietary law. You still want to be under the law. That means you got to obey the action of Sabbath of the Saturday. No work. You can't do nothing. You can't cook. You can't get your hat cut. You can't go mow the lawn. You can't do nothing on Saturday. If you find doing anything on Saturday, you will be able to be stoned and you're found guilty. When you're under the law, you got to observe the sacrifices. You got to go out there and burn off offerings. You got to go out there and go cut the bulls' throats, the sheep throats. Go out and do sacrifices. So let me ask anybody here y'all got sheep and goats in your yard? That you ready to sacrifice? So why worry about that when you know that once only sacrifice has been given, has been given, that is unto him, unto Jesus Christ. Amen. You're not under law no more. You're under grace. The Bible says that man, those that are in the flesh that's by the law is not justified. The only way you can be justified is through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. You're not even justified yourself. Not even me. Just because I'm up here preaching and have bear the title minister or whatever it may be, I'm not even justified in myself. The only way I can be justified is in Jesus Christ. Because let me tell you why I say in the 64th chapter, Verse 6 says, our righteousness is filthy as dirty rags. No matter what we do in life, we ought to do good works. We ought to give. We ought to 
love. We ought to help. But don't let that think your works is going to get you into the kingdom of heaven. The only way we can get in is made right and justified through Jesus Christ. Amen? Everybody all right? In him, you are a new creation. I want to pause on this one. Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verse 17, says that when you were in Christ, you become a new creature. Old things become old, and all things become new. Now, a paralytic can say anything. They say, I believe, or I have changed, or I believe in Christ. But also, Scripture says, love not by words only, but love by deeds, meaning that you got to back up your talk by your works and your actions. When you change in life, there's something out of there to change in your life. The way you talk, you might have been talking funny in a way of a negative way that you need to change the way you talk. You might, the way your attitude is, it needs to change. The way you dress, you might need to change. The way you just do things in life that's not according to the word of the Lord, you need to change from these things, amen? You need to start bearing fruit in life, amen? The Bible says you don't bear fruit of the tree, the axe is laid at the root. So when you become a new uh, creature in Christ, things ought to be different. You ought to hear things different in your life. You ought to see things different in your life. You ought to be able to read things and understand the scriptures different when people always have been teaching everything. Because one thing about it, how can you say you were converted and have no change? You got to have a change in your life. Now, I'm going to be honest and go down to earth with this. You can't, many people can't go cold turkey at one time. It takes time to change your life. It takes time. Can I just give a little example? You sit here and smoke. You sit here and drink two, three packs a day. Next thing you know, within a couple of months, you're down to two cans or you're down to two cigarettes. But you know that you're slowly getting out of it. And to the point now, I don't do it no more. You might cuss up a storm when you used to, but now every once in a while, you might slip over there. But next thing you know, I don't do it no more. Things in life, some things have to change, and people see that change in you. When you change, people are going to see a change in you from what the person you used to be in your life. Amen? Yes. You got to change and be a new creature in him. Amen? You can't say I didn't change and then still do the same things you're doing out there. You can't be out there game bang and say, I, I changed my life to Christ, and you go out and this day killing people and everything. You can't do those things. It has to be a change in your life, amen? amen. There was a man named Saul. That he got his name switched to Paul. That he lived a life that he thought he was doing what's right. And so God blinded him on the road of Damascus. Then God sent him to go be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ after three days and three nights of fasting. The Bible says the scales like fell from Paul's eyes and he started seeing things different. He started having a new tongue. Scripture says about uh, you having a new tongue. You talk different now. You're speaking of the Lord now. You didn't speak about these things no more. You were speaking good things about the word. You didn't talk like that before. So what all things have to change within us, and all got changed by God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? In him, there is wisdom and knowledge. In Luke, the second chapter, it says when Jesus grew, he grew in wisdom and stature. Letting you know that once you receive Jesus Christ in your life, then baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, it's time to grow now. It's time to grow. Some people might not know as much as you know. Some people might not know as much as I know. And I might not know as much as you know, or whatever it may be. But in Christ, there's always room to grow. That you have to grow in wisdom and knowledge and understanding of His Word. There's nobody here in this world that don't know all of it. Amen. Everybody got something to learn. And to the day you die, you're going to learn something new. Amen. That's just how God's word is. It's a lie. Amen. In him, the Bible says that you're rooted up and built up in him. When you're rooted up and built in him, you think of a plant being planted. And one thing about the Psalms, the first chapter, it says that I am like a tree planted by the rivers of water that my leaves never ever wither but I shall prosper wherever I go. Prosper not always about money. True prosperity is talking about the wisdom growing up and the knowledge 
knowledge and the understanding of the Lord. That's the prosperity that you grow and that your leaves will never ever with. Amen. Keep learning and keep being rooted and building up in the Lord because as scripture says, beware of those that have vain philosophies, those that have rudiments of the world. The Bible says that the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter days, some will draw away from the faith to go to the sound doctrines of death. There's many teachings out here, people, that you got to be careful of what people are teaching, what people are preaching, and what you are reading. Because one thing the devil can do, he can also go to Scripture and tell you something and break it down to where you believe 2 plus 2 is 5. You understand what I'm saying? This is the same thing he did to Eve. And the Scripture says that the serpent um, deceived Eve with his cunning, meaning that he knew what he was talking about to know how to bring the trickery amongst us. So be careful of everything you hear. Read for yourself and ask questions, amen, because there's a lot of doctrines out here to stray you away from Jesus Christ, amen? Don't listen today. Listen unto him, amen? As I'm getting ready to get to a close, unto him, he brought peace. They don't bring peace. He brings peace. Scripture says that in this world you will have tribulation, but unto him you got peace. So do not fear, I have overcome the world. What that basically tells us is that you always gonna have problems out here in the world. You always gonna run into something or someone in this world that's gonna distract your peace. But what about your inner peace? That's what Jesus kicks in at, as in your inner peace. Because once you have that inner peace, you don't let nothing else fade you that's around you or whatever it may be. Now, People might try to get aggressive with everybody, but you still got to pray for that inner peace. Amen? Because anything was trying to distract you from being unto him so you can join with they. Amen? Amen? Last thing is that in him, the Bible says that you are complete. What does it mean by being complete in him? It didn't say you are complete in they. You are complete in him. Nowhere else in the Bible, nowhere else in the world, you are complete other than unto Jesus Christ. It speaks of Amen? Amen. Meaning that if you ain't unto him, that means you 90%. You might be 98%. Matter of fact, you might be 99.5%, but you're not complete unless you're complete in him. And if you're not in complete, if you're not complete with him, you are not made whole in him. The Bible says that he's coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. That means that you need to be complete in him. Amen? He says, I'd rather have you hot. I'd rather have you cold. If you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out. That means that you're not complete. Be complete in the Lord. Keep praising, keep praying, keep reading, and keep doing your best to worship and honor him in your walk. The Bible says that those that receive Christ, walk ye in him. When you put your shoes on, you walk with your shoes on, right? You walk out there because you got your shoes on. So when you put Christ on, you walk with Christ. You walk with Christ the best way you can because you didn't put him on. You, not just your feet, you didn't put him on your whole body and life. Amen? Amen. Wear Christ. Keep Christ in your life. Scripture says that if you be willing, you'll eat good of the land. That means just try. Just try to do right. He knows your heart. He knows what you're about. But just try to do right. That's what I try to tell my mother. Just try to do right. Amen? Amen. In him, we have salvation. In him, we have the victory. And Jesus laid his life for her and died on the cross and shed his blood. He made an opportunity for all of us to be complete in him, in which we need to be thankful for. Because like I say, he is the door, he is the way, and the truth. Amen? Amen. He was buried in a barn tomb and raised on the third day with all authority in his hand. Something to be happy about. That's something to say that the Lord has been good to us because he's given each of us every day to get right with him. But we still want to act the fool, still want to live life to the fullest, don't even worry about what's going on. But the Lord is trying to show all types of signs out here in the world, amen? And you can go at any given time, amen? amen? Now, I want to break this down to the more, and this is going to be it. Basically, what I'm trying to say is this, and this is what the word is saying. When God sees us, he wants to see Christ. If God don't see Christ in us, the man, Christ, that's why to us a child was born 
and a child was given that we may live by the example Jesus did in the flesh. When God says that this is my beloved son, hear ye him, that means that we need to walk in him. If you're not in him and God don't see Christ in you, we will have hell to pay. That's the only way that we're going to make it. When God sees us and he sees Christ in us, that's why he says be rooted in him and be built in him. That's why he says walk ye in him. That's why he says this is my beloved son. Here ye him. Because each and one of us, he wants to see the son of God in us. If he sees us, we're doomed. When the day of judgment, when Jesus judges us, he wants to see us in him. If you're going anywhere else and trying to provide for yourself, you got to be guilty as charged. Amen. Amen. Is there anyone that would like to receive?